Scouting cameras to me really can provide so much intel. You know, there's so many different places and scenarios that you can put up scouting cameras at, whether you're looking at trails, you know, trying to judge which direction deer or any game species are coming from, feeding locations, whether you're putting out, uh, you know, attractive blocks like a quick draw or you're, you've got it near a corn feeder or a protein feeder or over a food plot. Scouting cameras are very effective around feeding areas. You know, this is an on-demand protein feeder that we use primarily from probably about the first of March till the end of September, and we don't use it anymore. But it's a great place to be able to get lots of data on your herd, whether you're looking at antler development, you're looking at you know fawn recruitment, you're looking at even how your turkey uh, population's doing. Setup wise for scouting cameras, there's a lot of different things to keep in mind. Uh, you know, first you've got to decide on how to mount it. You know, there's so many different ways to mount it. You know, a lot of these cameras come with straps. You can use baling wire. Uh, you can screw things into the into trees. But you know, there's so many places out there where you just can't do any of that because there's not wood, there's not brush that allows you to do that. And that's where something like the ground auger by Dead Deer really comes into play. This ground auger system is part of the Dead Deer lineup, and it allows you to be able to screw your camera mount in in a lot of those locations that you you know normally either one can't or two have to rely on a different type of a mounting system and in this case here I basically got both a corn feeder and a food plot now that I'll be able to get photos of where normally I couldn't even have come in from this angle. You, know, you can see on this particular stealth cam I've got it screwed into a tree mount right here and it's Triggering point's probably actually a little bit too high. Probably I'd be better off and be suited to put it right around here. I like things closer to around that waist high level. I've actually got this one aimed at a feeder uh, along this power line and you can see they pretty much uh, blasted this area out. It's pretty pretty well worn right here and it's a, it's a location that, you know, I can monitor it all year long. You know, once you get a scouting camera placed in a lot of locations, then you've got to kind of figure out how you want to set it up. I love to go into the custom settings on this particular model and many other ones as well. So once I get it set up to the exact way that I like to do it, you know, I want to know the date because that's very helpful for you as a hunter to be able to know what's coming and going. And in this setup here, it's so easy to change. Right now we're at the end of August, the 29th. If I need to change it, it's as simple as just hitting enter and you'll start to see that month change. It'll be the same for the date and the year and you can just adjust it up and down to exactly what you're looking at. Then when you're ready to go to the next setting, you just hit enter again. Then you start to scroll down. We look at our time. It's 9.42 in the morning. We'll go to the exact time zone that we're setting in. So whether you guys are hunting Eastern, Central, Western, Mountain, whatever, the time format, I like 12 hours. Some people like military time. They've got the option to set it up to that. Then you go down and I've got mine set up in the photo mode, which is what I'm looking for. I want it to operate 24 hours a day, seven days a week, because I'm looking to capture everything that's coming in and out of the exact area. Now this is a cool feature that I really like. You've got the option basically to set the quality of the photo that you want. How this plays a big role for a lot of people is, uh, you know, your memory card's only gonna be able to hold so much. Now, I typically use a 32 gig card on mine, but I like a very high resolution photo because I wanna be able to see everything that, you know, I'm looking at, but you can set it as low as two or as a high as 14. You know, scouting camera setup for a lot of people, that's an addiction. You know, it's not uncommon for me to run 20 to 40 different cameras at multiple locations all over the place. And I can't wait to open them up, grab the, the cards out, put them in my computer and start studying them. And I mean, there's just so much fun things that can, can happen when you start looking at scouting camera photos. The Stealth Cam G45NG Pro is 10% smaller than the original G series and features a dull matte finish camouflage pattern providing no unwanted reflections. This premier scouting camera features 45 no glow IR emitters to help illuminate up to 100 feet out for great nighttime photos, allowing you better coverage than ever before. In addition, you can set up Matrix Advanced Blur Reduction so you're no longer getting those fuzzy out of focus photos we all despise. The camera also comes with video and photo settings, allowing you to capture the best images for your needs. The Stealth Cam 45NG can capture as many as nine photos every time it triggers. 
This feature enables you to get as many looks and angles on a game species as possible to help you plan for your next hunt. So, if you're looking for a top-of-the-line scouting camera, we highly recommend the Stealth Cam G45 NG Pro. Stealth Cam, join the Trail Cam revolution.